Okay, so it's your first day of uh, high school science here. The first thing you need to know is that you need to be on time for class. Okay, the second thing that you need to know is that this is grade 10 and it is much different than what you are used to in junior high. What you need to get used to right away is that the workload is a lot greater than what you are used to. Okay, that is the biggest adjustment that grade 10s have to make when coming to this school. Before, you only had homework when somebody assigned you some. Now you have homework every day because you have to do that much review. There's just that much material in grade 10, all right? Give you an idea. If I taught you science nine at the pace that I have to teach science 10 in order to finish, I'd be done teaching you science nine by the second week of November. Okay, things move very, very fast in grade 10. The expectation is that you are doing between 15 and 30 minutes of review each night in each class if you wish to maintain the grade you had last year, All right? If you had 85 last year, that's good, but you didn't have to work as hard to get it as you will have to work to get it in grade 10, okay? You get out what you put in and you're gonna have to put in a little bit more. So I'm just putting that out there so that you're ready. Okay, that's the biggest transition problem that we have when coming into grade 10. It's just, there's so much more to do and it's your responsibility, right? It's not something that's coming in for marks. It's just stuff that you need to do to stay caught up. All right, to that end, attendance is our number one priority. You have to be here. Okay. If you are not here, you're going to miss quite a bit, especially if you're gone for several days. So hopefully nobody has any two-week vacations planned during the school year. Okay. If you do, I'm going to tell you today, that is a bad idea. Okay. If you miss two weeks of this course, that's a lot. Okay. A lot. And it'll be very difficult to stay caught up. Okay. There's a way, but it's a lot of work. Okay. So we expect you to be here all the time. Now, obviously, if you're at home and you're puking your guts out because you got the stomach flu, stay home, get better. I don't want you sitting in the desk with a bucket, okay? That's just gross, right? And it doesn't make any sense, right? But if you got a toothache, suck it up and come to school, okay? You can tough that one out, right? We don't want you missing for frivolous reasons. Okay, we did a little study last year, looked at the correlation between attendance and grades. Shockingly, it said that people who were absent the least did the best. I know we were totally shocked too, okay? But it's true. And in actual fact, what it said was more than seven absences results in a 10% lower average, okay? Now that's not gonna say that if you miss seven times, you're gonna be 10% lower, but on average, that's the tendency, okay? Beyond 12 absences, it was even more significant. It was 15, okay? So you wanna be here. You miss a lot of material every time you're not here, okay? And things are gonna happen. You make a school team and you miss a day because you're off at a tournament or a game or something like that, that happens. You can make up for a day, okay? What you don't wanna do is miss a whole lot, okay? Okay, um, thing to remember here is that whether you're here or not, you're responsible for what we did that day. If we did a lab, you still have to hand in the lab report. Okay. If we started working on an assignment, you still have to hand that in. And you have to hand it in the same time everybody else does. Right? I'm going to show you how I'm going to make that easier for you. I've got some resources available to you to help you with that. Okay? But that is the expectation. Simply not being here doesn't get you out of learning experiences that are necessary. Okay. Um, so there's a little note there at the bottom that says use podcast slash Google Classroom on my website to stay up to date. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. You guys have all used Google Classroom before, right? Okay. So you're all familiar with that. Okay, uh, lates. Class begins when the bell goes, okay? Um, in particular, this is period three, that's 1231. That means I expect you in your desk at 1231, okay? If you arrive at this classroom after 1231, starting tomorrow, the door will be in the closed position. That means stay out there. I don't want you knocking, I don't want you walking in. That's an interruption to everybody else's learning. Right? I will come and get you when there's a convenient time for me to do so that does not interrupt everyone else. Okay? If you've been out there for more than 10 minutes, I probably didn't see you. At that point, you can knock. All right? But it'll be when it's convenient and uh, in, you know, well, more, mostly convenient for me to come out and get you. Right? So be on time, please, because uh, it's really an interruption to everybody else when you're late. Okay. Um, questions on attendance? Okay. 
resources that are available to you for my class, okay? First off, I rely heavily and use heavily Google Classroom, okay? Your guys are period three. Your join code is right here, okay? So if you have the app on your phone, you can join right now. It's probably not a bad idea, okay? I would suggest that if you don't have your phone here, you probably write that join code down on the piece of paper I gave you today so that you can sign up tonight at home or something like that because there's a few things on my Google Classroom you're going to need for tomorrow. So once you have joined and you're into the classroom, if you go to the, obviously all the stream stuff will be here every day. I will post in the stream what we did that day. That will include a couple of things. Um, any lab sheets or data or anything like that would be posted in there if you need it, if we did a lab. Uh, if we did just a lesson where I was teaching you something, the notes or that section of the notes would be there, okay? And also a link to YouTube because every day, I will record one of my three Science 10 classes, okay? And I post that recording to YouTube, okay? That way, if you're absent, you can watch the recording and be caught up when you come back. That's what you do if you're absent, by the way, okay? You just go to Google Classroom, click on the link. It's the next best thing to being here. It is not a replacement for being here, okay? Because you can't take my course virtually that way. I had a person try to argue me that one time. He said, well, you know, how is it not the same? I can do everything on there. I said, can you ask me questions? He said, sure, I'll put it in the comments. And I said, well, that's too bad because I don't read them. Okay, um, so yeah, if you think that'll work, I'm going to tell you right now, no, I teach this class for real. I don't teach it virtually at 11 o'clock at night from my home. Okay, uh, so, but you can watch it, obviously, and then you come back the next day and you say, Mr. Coder, I watched the podcast, but I don't understand, uh, you know, how these two elements go together to make a compound. Can you explain that to me? That's good. You did your part as a student. You, caught, you got caught up. Then come and ask me a question. No problem. Okay, but if you come back after being gone for a week and go, Mr. Coder, what did I miss? My answer will be a lot. Okay, and that's the only answer you'll get out of me. Okay, when you come back to me, you should know what you missed. Okay, and have some questions to ask or something like that. Okay, uh, in the About tab on Google Classroom, you'll find the resources or stuff that you're going to need for this class. So obviously, there's first a link to my uh, to my YouTube channel, which we'll look at in a minute, and then there's the notes and worksheet packages. I'm not printing these, okay, but you do need them. That doesn't mean you have to print them. Okay, lots of people don't, and that's fine. Just put them on your phone or on your laptop or a tablet or whatever, okay? If you really do want to print them, go right ahead, print them at home. I would caution you though not to print them in color, okay? They are in color, but if you print them in color, you're going to be going to get new color cartridges before you're done printing the package, okay? I would suggest just printing it in black and white and then going back here if you need to look at a color diagram, look at it, blow it up as big as you want, okay? Um, if you want to print it, like I say, go ahead, but you don't have to. Okay. I've had lots of people who just have their notes package on their phone and they write a few little jot notes on paper beside it okay, and follow along in class that way. Okay. It is a Google Doc, so if you open one of these notes packages, okay, um, it'll look like this, right? And what you go on to do is you'll see it's view only, which means that you can't edit it because it's mine and I don't want you to mess with it. Okay. Um, but what you can do is just go to file, make yourself a copy. Okay, save it as, you know, whatever in your Google Drive, and then you always have access to it. And if you have a laptop or a tablet, you can type right into it if you want. Okay, while we're in class and going over things, and you'll never lose it. Okay, because it'll always be in your Google Drive. And okay, it's not like a piece of paper or a binder that, you know, m might get lost two days before the final exam. Right, this way you always have it. So, okay, it's up to you how you do that. Whichever way is going to work best for you, okay, is advisable, right? If you know that paper works better for you, then print it for yourself, okay? If you think, you know what, I'd like to try it electronically, go right ahead. That'll be fine too. Okay, so there's one for each unit, okay? There's one notes package for each unit. We're going to start with chemistry, okay? Um, and then there's also a worksheet package. I wouldn't bother printing that, okay? Um, we tried that for the first time last semester. Basically, you just call it up on your phone, you have it sitting beside you, and you do the questions on a sheet of paper, and we save some trees. Okay, so that's how we'll do the, the worksheet package. Uh, there's another file underneath that, lab report expectations. Don't print that. We're going to go over that next week. It's just there so that there's a template for you. Okay, and then today, this is the, the sheet of paper that I gave you. It is one of the few sheets of paper that you'll get from me. Okay, uh, and then I'll print you a periodic table. You don't need to print that. Okay, so I'll make that one for you nice and big. So uh, I would say that by tomorrow, it would be a good idea to at least have the chemistry part of the notes package ready. 
okay? However you're gonna do it, okay? But have it ready either on your phone or tablet or on paper or whatever. Okay, everybody okay with, with that idea? So I'm gonna rely fairly heavily on this to stay up to date. Any assignments that we do, lab reports that we do will be done through Google Classroom. Everything is submitted electronically, okay? I don't take in paper because paper can get lost, okay? This stuff doesn't get lost. So basically for you guys, everything you hand in will be handed in, submitted electronically through Google Classroom, okay? All right. Um, the other thing, sorry, was uh, the YouTube channel. So if you, um, oh, that's clear, so that's the wrong one. We want this one. Okay, so my Science 10 YouTube channel looks like this, okay? And every day, like I say, the recording for the class will be on there. Your voices won't end up on there. So if you ask me a question, I usually just repeat the question, okay? Your voices don't end up in the recording, okay? All that ends up on there is my voice and whatever's on the smart board, right? But it is pretty useful as a resource for review, okay? If there's something you didn't get, you can always go back and just review a few minutes of a lesson. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay. Um, I usually try and keep them in short, like kind of 10 minute segments if I can. Um, if you're doing a lab report, I record the instructions and all the tips and hints that I give you for the lab report and post those as well. It's always a good idea to listen to that while you're putting together a lab report or doing an assignment because then you get all the little details that kind of make the difference between getting an 80 or a 90. Okay. Um, so it's a good idea to use those. If you ask anyone who's taken my class, they'll tell you, yeah, definitely do that. Okay. And it's not really any more work. You just have it playing in the background while you do the work. Okay. It's just good to have it there. Um, so yeah, that'll, that stuff will all be on there. You don't have to subscribe because obviously I'll put the links in Google Classroom every day. So you don't need to get a notification that, hey, we had class today and there was a recording. You know that already. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so like I said, each day I'll post the day's activities. There's, uh, we got the join code already, okay, and I already talked about uh, if you're gone, make sure that you go to Google Classroom and do what we did that day, okay? Then come in and ask questions if you need to, okay? Uh, in terms of asking questions, getting help, okay? Obviously, we have scheduled help Monday through Thursday, okay, from 1126 to 1148. You're more than welcome to come in here during scheduled help. We didn't have it today because we had the uh, school-wide assembly, but okay, every other day after your period two class, if you need to come in and ask me something, you come from your period two class to here, okay, and ask questions. I'm also in here every day at lunch because I have no life and no friends, and so I stay in here, okay? So if you want to come in here and ask questions, I'm in here at lunch, except the first half on Tuesday, I think I have supervision. But other, if as long as I'm not in supervision, I'm in here at lunch. So you can always come in and ask questions if you need to. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions on the resources? Okay. Since you guys are familiar with Google Classroom, okay, that's great because that's a big resource. Uh, tomorrow we'll put the uh, we'll have the Chromebooks and we'll make sure that everybody gets signed in in case you didn't get a chance to do that. Okay. Uh, classroom behavioral stuff, okay? Respect is the big thing here, okay? And I'm gonna respect you, okay? I'm not gonna single you out in front of everybody else and humiliate you, okay? I'm not gonna tease you and make fun of you, okay? That's not what I'm gonna do. I might give you a hard time if you're late, okay? But uh, beyond that, I'm not going to do that. Um, and I expect you to treat your classmates in a similar fashion, okay? No one should be singled out, no one should be made fun of. If I find that that's happening, I'm going to be displeased. Okay. We don't want to be in that situation because that's not a Christian or respectful thing for us to do. Okay. Um, if you hear me say, listen up, that means I need your attention right away. That means earbuds are out okay, and eyes are forward and I need your attention. If I have a you know, real problem getting your attention, then I might send you out in the hallway so I can have your full and undivided attention in a few minutes. Usually it's not a big deal by the time you get to grade 10, okay? but sometimes it's like, listen up, we need to get started. Listen up, there's a mistake on this sheet. Listen up, there's a fire over here and we need to go now, okay? Whatever it is, if I say listen up, I need your attention right away, okay? Another big change uh, from junior high, like we said here with the workload, okay? When work is assigned in class, it is to be completed. I will not take everything I give you in, okay? I don't assign homework and then check it the next day, right? I don't do that. If we're working on a worksheet in class and you don't finish it, it's probably a good idea to go home and finish it, okay? But it's not something I'm going to walk around and check to make sure everybody did, okay? You're responsible for your academic success at this point, so choose to do it, 
Okay. The way I kind of check homework is you're going to have a quiz every Tuesday and every Thursday. They're very short, five to ten minutes. Okay. And I give you the quizzes ahead of time. So on Mondays after school and Wednesdays after school, I will post in Google Classroom tomorrow's quiz. Okay. It's not a trick. It's going to be the quiz you get the next day. All right. The idea is you go home and do the quiz at home. Okay. Use your notes or the YouTube recordings or whatever. You know, FaceTime your friends, work on it together, whatever. Okay. But get it done at home. Come in the next day. I put the same quiz up on the board. You get 100%. Sound fair? Okay. That's, that's how I kind of check homework. All right. If you're doing well on those, and you should because you got them ahead of time and you can work together, okay, that's kind of how I expect you to study and review is do well on those. Okay. Do those each time. Okay. Um, there are going to be obviously some things that do come in for marks, lab reports, assignments, a few projects here or there. Okay. Expect that close to once a week, you'll have something that you're handing in for marks. Okay. Close to once a week. It won't end up being exactly once a week, but it's close. Okay. Either a lab report or an assignment or something is going to be due for marks about once a week. Okay. I expect those, those have to be done because they are going to be marked. Okay. The other stuff, like I say, you know, it's, it's not going to be checked. It should be done, but it's not going to be marked. Okay. Um, another big change from junior high, there's no rewrites. Okay. It doesn't matter who you have for science 10. There's no rewrites in science 10. Okay. We're transitioning to real life. Okay. There aren't do-overs in real life. If you're a brain surgeon and you got a scalpel in somebody's brain and you sneeze, there isn't a do-over for that. Okay. So there aren't do-overs for this. Okay. You need help on something, you come and see me long before the test. Okay. You know if you're having trouble with something, come in and see me about it. Let's handle that problem early. Okay. You have plenty of opportunity to come in and see me for help. So make use of it. Right. If you're doing all the things that are recommended, you're doing your regular review each night, okay, you're coming and seeing me for help, you're doing your marked assignments, all of that, you shouldn't have to worry about the test. The test will take care of itself. Okay. But if you're sitting around going home and playing Xbox until you fall asleep every night, you're going to have a problem when the exam comes. All right. So make sure you're doing your regular review. Exams won't be a problem. If for some reason you do happen to fail a test, I am not completely heartless. Okay. But I'm not going to let you write the test again because that's also that's not fair to everybody else. All right. But what I usually do is have you come in and we work on a couple of things together okay, to make sure that you understand and then I make some small adjustment. Okay, to the grade, but it's not a rewrite. Okay, you're not going to get to go from, well, I got 30 because I didn't study, then I got to write exactly the same test and I studied for it and I got 95 because it was well the second time around and I knew everything. That's not fair. Okay, so that's what we'll do instead. Hopefully, no one's even going to be in that situation. It's very rare that I even have to do that. Okay, all right. Um, fairness versus equality. Okay, you can't be, you can't treat everybody equally and be fair. It's impossible. Everybody's different. Everyone's situation is different. So I take every situation on a case by case basis when I'm dealing with students. All right. I'll give you an example. About nine years ago, I had uh, a lab that was due. Everybody had handed in except two kids and they were both standing at my desk. Okay. First guy, to his credit, was very honest with me. He said, Mr. Kerr, I don't have my lab report done. I'm like, how can you not have that done? I gave you a week and a half to do that. It would take you like 20 minutes. Yeah. I left it till the night before, and then my favorite show was on, and I fell asleep watching it. Your favorite show sounds pretty boring. But anyway, he didn't get it done. And he was totally honest about why he didn't get it done. Okay? And I said to him, well, I mean, you can still hand it in, but you're taking the late penalty. Right? You're not going to get the same mark as everybody else, because everybody else is already done. And uh, he was fine with that, and he walked away. The girl behind him looked terrible. Like, she looked like she'd have to get better to die. She looked that bad, okay? Looked just awful. And I said, uh, are you okay? Said, well, I've been better. I'm like, well, what's going on? Said, well, last night my parents had this huge fight and they both stormed out of the house and left me to make dinner for my four brothers and sisters. And I made chicken and I didn't cook it enough and we were all up all night throwing up and I didn't get my homework done. So I have to be a little bit of a jerk in that situation and point out the obvious, which is don't leave stuff for the night before. 
Okay, calamity knows when it's the night before and that's when it strikes. Okay, so if you don't leave stuff till the night before, stuff like that doesn't happen. Okay, but I also said, you know, look, that's that's pretty awful. I hope everything's going to be okay. Um, come in at lunch and let's get it finished. Okay, I didn't dock her a late penalty, but it's pretty rare that if you don't have it done on time, that I'm that nice about it. Okay, you got to have it. Now, I expect that from a respect point of view, you don't come up here and audition for the musical by giving me an Academy Award winning performance complete with tears with some made up story about why you don't have your homework done. Okay, hopefully you'll just, you know, be respectful and honest with me like the first guy was. Okay, um, if you ever feel I haven't been fair, please come and talk. And please come and talk to me about it at a time, you know, kind of in private. Okay. And 3.5, 3 accountability. Okay. We've kind of talked about this. There's no rewrites. Okay. Things are due on a certain date. Okay. There is a late penalty if they're not. Okay. All of that kind of stuff. That is the start of real life, the start of accountability. Okay. Real life can be pretty cruel. You're still pretty sheltered here. Okay. But in real life, if you don't get something in on time, what can happen to you? You could lose your job. Yeah. Okay. My wife used to work in oil and gas. She wrote uh, legal agreements and did like the bidding process for big projects. So people would hand in bids to her, right? And they had to be in that there was a deadline for bids. She couldn't even legally accept a bid after, even if it was one minute after she could not accept a bid that came in after the deadline from a legal perspective. She actually had a company who submitted a, pro a proposal for a $6 million project two minutes late. She couldn't look at it, can't even be considered. Okay, a $6 million project is the difference between keeping a business going and going bankrupt for some companies. Okay, that's a pretty big deal. That's how harsh life is. We're not that harsh here. Okay, but just so you know, we do have deadlines and we do have accountability. Okay, all right. In terms of your marks, so assessment and evaluation. The first thing is, is that I won't discuss your mark with you in class in front of everyone else. Okay, if you need to talk to me about a mark that you've received from me, come and see me in private at lunch or, or break or something like that. Okay, because if we have to do it in front of everybody else, that doesn't work out well because I'm not actually even allowed to talk to you about your mark when other people could hear us talking about it. Okay, so come and talk to me in private after, and I'm happy to do that. Okay, most of the time you don't even need to because when I hand something back, I go over the whole thing. Okay, I go over the whole thing in class, okay, and basically leave no stone unturned in terms of here's what was acceptable on this question, or here's what was not acceptable on this question, or whatever. Okay, um, your marks will be distributed according to the syllabus, so we'll look at that in a minute, how much percent for each thing. Okay? Assignments and labs are to be handed in on time. Okay? And on time means, according to 4.4 here, at the start of class on the due date. Okay? At the start of class, not at the end of the day, not midnight. I know some teachers do that. Okay? Start a class on the due date, because that way I can be fair between all my classes. If I make the deadline midnight, that's more fair for period one than it is for you. They get an extra like four hours. Okay, so it's the start of class on the due date. That way it's the same amount of time for everybody. Okay, and I just set that up in Google Classroom. If it comes in after the deadline, even if it's one minute, it's tagged late. All right, so make sure you've got it done on time and click the submit button so it comes through. Okay, in my mind, guys, there are not varying degrees of late. Okay, if it's late, it's late. One minute, five weeks, it's late. Okay, that's how it works. So make sure you've got it in on time. The late penalty is 30%, okay? Doesn't matter whether it's one minute or five weeks. I don't have a sliding scale because then I have to keep track of how many days late something is. And the problem with the sliding scale is eventually your assignment isn't worth anything. And I don't want that. I want your assignment even late to be worth something, okay? Because it's a learning activity and it's important you do it. If you know it's not worth anything, you're not going to do it, okay? So it's always gonna be worth something, but it is penalized if it's late. Here's why. If you hand something back to me on, or you, sorry, if you hand something in to me on Tuesday, you'll get it back on Wednesday. I always mark stuff and get it back for the next day. Always. I have failed to do it once in 18 years of teaching. My son was born and I didn't do my marking that night because I figured my wife would be pretty angry at me if she was in labor and I was marking science labs. I think I made the right decision on that one. Okay, pretty sure anyway. Okay, um, so yeah, 
know that you will always get your stuff back from me the next day, which is why if it comes in a day late, it's hardly fair to give you the same marks everybody else got. Okay? You have the advantage of being able to talk to everybody else okay, or talk to somebody in my morning class who knows what the right answers are. It's not fair. Okay? It's not fair to everybody else. Okay? You, can't get, you can't get 100% if you hand it in late. Okay? Questions on that? All right. Um, also, if you're absent the day something is due, I still expect it to come in. I mean, we're submitting this stuff electronically. You don't have to be here to submit something on Google Classroom, so I expect it to still come in. Unless you're in a coma, then you know you kind of have an excuse. Okay, everybody, follow there. I, I can, I'm, you know, I'll make exceptions if you're really, really sick. Like I couldn't even get out of bed, Mr. Coderre. Like, okay, I get it. Right, but usually we can click the submit button one way or the other. Okay, questions on any of that stuff? All right. Um, so for the uh, course syllabus, there are four units in Science 10. Okay, Alberta Learning calls the first one energy and matter and chemical change. We call that chemistry. Okay, uh, so the first unit uh, will be you know naming compounds. You've done that before in grade nine. We'll go into a little more detail. Uh, we'll look at chemical reactions, uh, balancing, writing. We'll look at the mole equation. We'll look at structure of the atom. Actually, that's where we'll start today. Okay, things like that. So that'll be what chemistry is. That unit tends to be the toughest one especially semester one where you know you've had the summer break and you got to get rid of the summer brain and kind of get back into the swing of things okay um, we'll be doing that one up until around Thanksgiving and we'll probably finish around the second week of October somewhere in there okay after that is cycling of matter and living systems which we call biology okay so we'll be going over parts of the cell cell structures function uh, transport transport in multicellular organisms how a plant works okay things like that okay we'll be covered in that unit typically we finish that one up around parent teacher interview time so middle end of november okay is when that one will typically finish up okay that one tends to be a bit easier it's a lot of memorization and labeling and stuff like that unit 3 energy flow and technological systems is physics Okay, so it's the, the best and coolest of all sciences, right? It is. All other sciences come from physics. Chemistry is applied physics. Biology is applied chemistry. Okay, they all come from, from physics. All right, uh, so in that, that one's a bit more math-based, okay? There's a little bit of algebra and using your calculator, graphing, things like that. Don't need to be afraid of math. Math's not bad, okay? Um, we can all handle it. you got to be able to, you know, if you got... Uh, an equation you got to be able to solve for x is really the extent of the math okay in the physics unit okay there's actually even a little bit in the chemistry unit but it's not tough okay um we'll go over motion graphing energy work okay and things like that in in the physics unit and typically that one finishes up either right before or right after christmas depending on the how the calendar falls i would say given the way the calendar falls this year probably right before christmas is when we'll finish up Okay. Our last unit is much shorter than the others. I've taught it in as few as five days, okay? but typically I like to have 12, okay? um, but it kind of just depends how much we spend on the other units. Um, but it's pretty short. It's energy flow and global systems. We go over like energy budgets for the planet and how energy gets distributed worldwide, things like that. So it kind of tries to pull everything together into one unit. Okay? Uh, and we'll finish that right before final exams start in January. Okay, questions on the content? Right. Now, for your assessments, okay, your unit exams, they're four, they're equally weighted, okay, even though one unit is shorter than the others, the unit exams are all worth the same amount, they total up one quarter, 25% of your overall grade, okay. The coursework that you submit to me, lab reports, assignments, projects, whatever, okay, that is 45% of your final mark. Okay, that's the stuff you can ask for help on, you can work with your friends on, whatever, okay, and it's worth almost half of your final grade. So take advantage of that, okay, half of your mark and you can get help on it. So take advantage, get help, okay, ask me, ask your friends, work together, okay, I'm fine with that. But that's a big chunk of your mark and you want to get it. Your quizzes, okay, and we already talked about those every Tuesday, every Thursday, and you're getting them ahead of time, are 10% of your mark. So realistically, everybody should be getting between nine and 10% of their 10% on that mark. Okay, sorry, that, that did, sorry. You wanna get more than 9% of the 10%. You wanna get nine out of the 10. Sorry, I said that wrong. Okay, uh, yeah, you wanna get most of that. I mean, realistically, you should. If I'm giving you the questions ahead of time, there's really no reason to not do well, okay? And guys, is it gonna happen that maybe a quiz goes poorly for you? It is, it's gonna happen, that's fine. 
Okay, but come in and get some help on it after then. Say, Mr. Goodyear, I really didn't understand where I went wrong here. I just don't get this. We'll sit down, we'll work on it, no problem. Okay, and, and one quiz, think about it, guys. You're going to have one every Tuesday, every Thursday. There's a lot of Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's only 10%. What's each quiz worth? Very little, yeah. It, each quiz is worth very little. It's a review tool, okay? It's to help you learn the material. Yeah, you get some marks out of it when you do well. That's important for sure, okay? But if one goes poorly, it isn't the end of the world for you. Now, if the first one goes poorly, it's going to look like it's the end of the world because it'll be the only mark in your whole, like, power school, okay? But don't worry, it'll rectify itself, okay? Okay, uh, and then your final exam, which happens at the end of January, will be 20%, okay? It's a two-hour exam written in the gym usually. Worth 20%. Questions on that? Okay, other questions that usually come up. Well, first off, going green, okay? Like I said, I will photocopy very little, all right? When we do a lab, we'll have the Chromebooks, the lab sheet, all of that will be electronic, okay? And we're gonna save some trees, okay? I calculated last year uh, how much stuff I used to photocopy and how much I photocopy now, and it ended up being a stack of paper boxes that were like almost five feet high, okay? That's like what? three, four trees, I don't know, okay? It seemed like a lot anyway. So I save a lot of paper now, I save a lot of trees, okay? So um, you're not gonna get much on paper, okay? But you'll need to obviously have either an electronic version of the notes, okay? Um, or a paper copy, whichever, like we said, works best for you, okay? Um, other things, can I have a phone in here? Yes, you can, you have to, really, okay? A phone's a tool, I mean, if you don't have a phone, you don't have to go get one, but, okay? If you have one, yeah, you can have it in here, okay? You're 15 years old, 16 years old, you're mature enough to, to handle that. Please prove me right on that, okay? I don't wanna be proven wrong on that, okay? Um, but I'm gonna trust that you can make good decisions with your phone, use it for what we're using it for, have your notes open on it, the worksheet package open on it or whatever, okay? Using it for what we need it to be used for. All right, if you want to have a like a Chromebook or a laptop or a tablet, that's fine too. Okay, I got no problem with you having those tools in here either because that's what they are, they're tools. Okay, if you want to use them, go right ahead. That doesn't mean you go home tonight and tell mom and dad, Mr. Coderre says I need a $5,000 MacBook. No, Mr. Coderre didn't say that. Okay, if you have one, wonderful, and you want to bring it to school, great, you can. Okay, I didn't say you needed a brand new computer, All right? But you can have one if you if you want it, okay? Um, can you have food or drink in here? Yes, you can, okay? Um, just if you make a mess, you clean it up, okay? The janitors are busy enough as it is, okay? Um, if you do what I had one kid do, he came in every day for period one with like a 250 gram bag of Doritos and a Coke. And that was his breakfast. I, I started just giving him a really hard time about his nutrition because it's really not a nutritious breakfast. You might as well have black coffee and cigarettes if you're having a bag of Doritos and a Coke for breakfast, okay? Um, so yeah, uh, pick something healthy. But yeah, you can have food or drink in here. That's no problem. Um, closest bathrooms, okay? Right out the door here. The girls is uh, the closest and the boys is just past the kind of pony wall that's out there, okay? Um, fire exit for us, okay? Our primary fire exit is out the languages wing here. So we would turn left out the door, okay? Go to where the stairwell is and go to the doors that lead out to the back parking lot, okay? That's our primary fire exit. Our secondary fire exit is down the end of the science hallway straight down to the right, okay? Uh, we meet in the back parking lot one way or another, okay? In uh, case of emergency with those things, okay? Okay, uh, can you have your headphones in and listen to music? Uh, at times, yes. If we're working on a worksheet or doing something like that where it's independent and it's seat work and whatever, and you wanna isolate yourself from distractions, absolutely, okay? Feel free to do that, I used to have to do that, okay? Um, but if I'm teaching actively like I am right now, then I expect the ears to be free of the earbuds and that you're paying attention, all right? So yes, you can have those if you want and the situation uh, allows it. Um, I will obviously post all the due dates and everything. They'll be on Google Classroom, but I usually also write them on the board here. Okay, so you can always kind of double check up here, um, but make sure that you're uh, checking Google Classroom okay, using the school calendar, set up your notifications so it tells you, you know, a day before something is due or two days before, okay, so that you're ensuring you're getting it done. All right, any questions from you guys? Okay then we're gonna get started on the course material. So you might wanna get a clean sheet of paper out since you don't have a notes package yet.